very warm welcome back to Food Journey Season 4 and we're off with a bang. Today it's Meet 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 where our focus turns to pitmaster Mr. O as he shares his experiences and expertise when he teaches us how to cook a meat feast on his fabulous mobile smoker. I arrived this morning as he and his assistant Ifai were putting in place this massive piece of culinary equipment, humorously named Smalls. Mr. O, welcome to Food Journey. The pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for being here today. The last time we met, we were at Bizarre Foods Day. Wow, Bizarre Foods. <gasps> My oh, goodness. That was, that was something. That was memorable that was and I really wanted to get a chance to pull you aside, so to speak, and delve a little bit into your own world of uh, cooking meat. Be my guest. Now you are a pit master. That's right. And now for the benefit of people who didn't get the explanation last time, tell us again, what is a pit master? Okay, so a pit master is that guy or lady in some instances that has mastered the art and science of managing meats over fire. Mr. O has an arsenal of grills and smokers, which he uses as he needs, and some of them, like Smalls, he's built all by himself. So the first question I want to ask you is this myth. Maybe you can dispel it for us. Is there a difference between barbecuing and grilling? So to keep it short and sweet, um, barbecue is low and slow, whilst grilling is hot and fast. I see. Or to put it in another way, grilling is direct cooking, while barbecue is indirect cooking. I see. So that's why you see people always standing around the grill, because basically you have to make sure that things don't burn from the open that's flame. Grilling. That's grilling for you. Whereas what you're saying in, in the other respect, um, barbecuing, you have sometimes maybe even indirect heat or yes. just not fire coming at it. Exactly. Right. I, I noticed on your amazing grill that you have, you have a section that you call the firebox, is it? Yes, on the smoker, yes. Yes, and one has to be kind of cautious around that place because it must get incredibly hot. Yes. What kind of temperatures are we dealing with when you're really fully stoked up there? So the, the firebox, uh, I've measured the firebox at 550 before, about 550 degrees before. Okay. But because I'm not grilling there directly, I don't need that heat. What I need is the radiant heat that's going into the smoker. So typically between 225 and 275, maybe lower, but I try to keep it at 275. That's really hot. And I see that you've always got your heavy duty gloves on for such purposes. Now you're using quite a few different woods as well. I can see behind us we've got um, some varieties. Last time I met you we had something called a German flag, German flag yeah, that's and then right. if I can remember correctly we had uh, cola nut. Yes. True. Tell me that cola nut wood that you use is it bitter like the cola nut or is it does it add a bitter element or a, to In, the food? Interestingly the, the wood itself is not bitter. Right. It just has flavor. But I've discovered this new wood here. Unfortunately, I don't know the name yet. I'm okay. still trying to track the name, but it's, it's very, very fragrant. And the, the smoke doesn't hurt the eye. So I, I, I take this over the cola nut any day. Right. So anybody watching us right now, it's plain to see that we're sitting in front of something quite incredible. Now, this is a massive grilling machine that you have constructed from scratch. Now, how do I begin to talk about Smalls, whose name is a definite understatement it can best be described as the ultimate cooking machine, if you have the space. Apart from the main smoking chamber, there are also two other grilling stations and a huge chimney stack, signaling that smoking is ongoing, as we'll see. The firebox is the heat center and operates with charcoal and various types of wood to produce a long, hot, slow cook radiating heat throughout the chambers. 
temperature gauges tell us where we need to be in terms of heat regulation to get the very best results. Now, when you were designing this, how do you start? Um, okay, so because I'm, I'm self-taught, I, I learned barbecue original by myself, um, and I took some additional classes thereafter. Likewise, in designing and building grills, I'm self-taught as well. Um, so I could see something on Instagram, or see something on the internet, maybe on Pinterest, and it catches my fancy. And I come, I find a way to put it together in a very cost-effective way. I'm particularly interested today in marinating the science of putting flavor into meat or into fish or into poultry or into anything that you wish to put on a grill, as we've seen. <laughs> Can you explain to us the science of getting the flavor into the meat? So marinating actually infuses flavor into the meat, um, but after you marinate the meat, you need to leave it a bit to rest for it to absorb the essence of the marinade. Um, I personally prefer dry spices or dry seasoning, but any, any of them work. Depending on the type of flesh that you're using, obviously you use different marinades. I would imagine that maybe prawns or shrimp and chicken and meat all have different muscle structures. True. What is the component that is really necessary to make sure that marinades penetrate down to the bone, as they say? Um, I, would, I would say, the, um, I mean, traditionally, the same way our ancestors did it, salt. Salt. salt is just the key ingredient that you, as, as, as a base, it cuts across all, all, all meats or fish or whatnot. So without the salt, you don't actually get that penetration into the meat? Not necessarily, but it actually helps you get it in. Because salt draws out the moisture from the meat and then that can now absorb the... The, the rest of the ingredients, yeah. interesting. That's very interesting. So I think the word we're looking for is osmosis. Oh, okay, for the science students. Osmosis. Yes. <laughs> if we're getting scientific. Yeah. Osmosis, yeah, true. True semi-permeable. Yeah, That's yeah. right. I remember my science from school, and I knew that one day <laughs> I would have to remember that word, and it's today. I'd like to ask you, what kind of marinating technique are you going to show us? So, um... Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not heavy on marinades, so uh, the marinade I'll do today will be very, very basic. It will be something anyone can do at home at any time. Good. That's yeah. definitely what we want to show. We want to make sure that people can watch the show and then go off into the kitchen and use simple ingredients, I hope, to be able to achieve amazing results. Yeah. You've already got something in there that is cooking. I can smell it. Yep. It is pork. Yep. What? part of the pig are you smoking at the moment? So right now I have every part of a pig apart from the head and the trotters in there. <gasps> My goodness. So a whole pig actually. And what did you put on that to create your flavor base today? Um, so I kept it simple. I used, um, I used salt as the base and then I put on our own rub, our own dry seasoning on top of that. Okay, I actually put yaji as well, so that's three, three, three seasonings. Okay, so when you say our own rub, are you going to tell us what the secret components are to your rub? <laughs> yeah, sure, I will tell you. Will you have to kill me afterwards? How did you guess? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. O had already been busy with a whole hog, which had been split into large pieces and was being cooked with a low, slow method. And we stopped our chat for a moment to check on its progress. All the while, the fire pit was continually stoked with a variety of wood, from German flag to our own local cola nut, as well as the occasional mopping of the meat. Even I was allowed to go. Now I see you keep stoking up this fire to keep it really hot. And you also remove some of the bark, outer layer of the bark of this particular log. Why did you do that? Okay, I actually took it out because I wanted to save it for later. Right. The back creates the smoke. I see. Um, that works well with the meat. Right. So if everything burns at the same time, I'll lose it all. So you keep looking at those temperature gauges to know. Yes. So obviously there's not enough heat right now for the pork that's cooking. Yes. 
How did you know that just by? Um, well, the pig actually spoke to me. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oink, no, oink, we need more fire. <laughs> So the moment I opened it, I could see from the from the texture of the meat, I wasn't seeing any reaction on the meat. Right. It was actually experiencing what they call a stall. Mm -hmm. So I needed the fire to go up with it. Okay. I get you. Well, this is real hot. I don't want to cook myself, so I'm going to move away. And look at this battery-operated fan for stoking the fire. How cool. Oh, this is fantastic looking huge pieces of pork you've got there now what effect does this have on the thick skin of the pork does it make it any softer the fact that you've seasoned this with what was it just salt salt and our dry rub and you dry your secret dry rub, secret dry rub. i'm still alive even though <laughs> and the whole idea is to redistribute the moisture so this pig for instance is split in two and i can see the pool of its juices and i don't need that I don't need the juices to be there, so I need to redistribute it. So in mopping, um, you do one of two things. Either you introduce moisture or you redistribute moisture. In this instance, I'm going to redistribute the moisture. So now, Mr. O, I definitely want to taste a little bit of this. I see there's some crispy bits on the top, and I'm just wondering whether those are ready for the food journey trial. Yes, we have some bits ready. Let me just slice some from here. I'm dying to see how this tastes. They always say the crispy bits are the nicest. Oh, oh yeah. All right, guys. With the, <laughs> with the salty rub. Yes. Mmm. This is everything. So flavorful. And that lovely crust on the top just can't be beat. Mm, well done. Well done. Fantastic. Loving that. Mm, really good. It is good. Very excited anytime I get near a barbecue because it's always the promise of something good to eat. <laughs> and I know today you've got mm, a lot to show us. True, true, as always. So based on the meat we have today, we'll do a bit of brining, we'll do a bit of marinating, we'll do dry seasoning, we'll do a whole bunch of other techniques, freezing, mopping, as the case may be. Well, I'm very excited, Pitmaster, to try anything that you give me today because my stomach is empty. I did not eat breakfast. My stomach is washed, as they say, ready to taste anything that you're going to show us today. So should we get started and have a go prepping some of the meats? Let's do this. Wonderful. Let's do this. Now let's take a moment for a food journey bite where we give you little tips and clips to enhance your own food journey at home. Food Journey Bite Our indigenous diet is full of healthy goodness, rich fruits and vegetables, stabilizing carbohydrates. However, if we aren't burning enough calories a day, it can all work against us. Have balance and variety, not only on the plate, but also in your daily activity life. Live long! And that's your Food Journey Bite. So what's on the menu today? We set up a table full of ingredients, which included these cute little bottles full of a variety of spices, some secret and some not. Okay, Mr. O, I'm ready to see how you're going to marinate this chicken. You've got some beautiful wings there, I can see. And tell us a little bit about what you're going to do first. Okay, so first, um, we've, we've cleaned up the wings. We've right. washed them up. So I'm going to show you how to actually prep wings. Okay. Three ways. Right. So there are three ways to prep wings. Um, one way, a popular way, is to have it whole. So this, I'm done with prepping. Right. Whole. Um, another way to prep wings is to take off the point. Um, I've done one already, which is the hole. There's nothing more to do. And the second method is to take off the tip, put your knife, press down, tip is off. That's easy. 
easy peasy. So second way to do wings. And what do we call this part of the wing again? This is the point. The point. The point, yeah. Right. Typically crunchy, but mm -hmm. some people don't like it. So depends on how you want to do it. Okay. So one way here, another way here. The third way, if you bring another wing, take off the tip. You need to find where the tip connects to the flat and press downwards. Tip is off. Do the same thing for the flat and the drumette. There you go. So, wing three ways. So what's up next? We've cut those chicken wings. Now I see you've got some amazing beef ribs. These are thick and juicy. Yep. One beef, thing beef I know, short ribs. beef short ribs. One thing I know about ribs is that there's a little membrane on them. Yes. Good. So yes. that's what you're just about to remove. Which is rolls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us why should we remove that membrane? Okay, so the membrane is um, is it's it's is sinewy. It's tough. It's almost like leathery paper, mm -hmm. and it's not chewable. That's one. And then secondly, it actually prevents your rub or your marinade to get into the meat. Now for beef ribs, um, it may not be necessary to take it out because it's so close to the bone, but I'm used to taking it out, so I'll take it out anyway. Look for the corner, pick it up. And rip it off. And just rip it off. That's it. Do it again in case you fell asleep. Rip it out. Rip it out. Okay, you can all see now that this is open to seasoning. Fabulous. I see you got your favorite ale here. And yes. is that the basic marinade for the beef ribs? I prefer to use any lager, really. But um, I mean, you can use anything. Some people actually like wine. I prefer lager. Wine sometimes gets a bit too heavy on the on the brine. So lager works for me. Fine. OK, so what do you do? Just pour? Just pour it in. Pour it in. Shall I do that? Yes, please do. OK, so here Just we go. Pour it in all over that is that good pouring yep 10 points 10 points now this loveliness will marinate for the next four hours or if you have the time overnight so we brine those lovely beef ribs in our favorite lager and now i see you have some very interesting things here you have some milk and i see you have some honey Milk and honey. Milk and Great honey. combination, but nothing that I would have expected you'd use for a marinade. So show us what you've got in mind. So I'm going to um, marry milk and honey and put a bit of salt and then a bit of pepper. Okay. And then use that as our marinade for the chicken wings. the chicken wings. Just 30 minutes to an hour of marinating will do for this type of flesh. The beef rib seasoning is as follows. Layer after layer of flavor. Meat side up. Two. Three for Sonia. One for Mr. O. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. <laughs>
Remember those wings? Time for them to come out of the marinade for a thorough dusting of the rub. And onto the grill as well. So Mr. O, is it time to taste anything yet? Yes, we should actually be able to taste the chicken. <sighs> I've been waiting for this. Let's go for it. Okay. Oh. Woohoo! Tips. Tips. Go ahead. First, tip to mouth. Talk to me. I can't even talk. Mm -hmm. This one, wing cheers. Get yours. How do we drum it? A drum it. Oh, okay. Wing cheers and drum it cheers. Mmm. Down to the bone. Yep. So, the redness you see there mm -hmm. is the reaction of the smoke, the effect of the smoke on the meat. Oh, mm, look and at that! Thicker cut of meat. So this is smokiness. Yeah, that's what. On the thicker cut of meat, we we'll call it the thin grain. Mm. Mm. So good. <laughs> ah. Want some? Those ribs are gonna need five more hours to cook. Oh no! Time to taste the huge hog. And look at those ribs just yielding as they're pulled out. Do your thing. You want the duck? I want the anything. Let's mix it up. Oh. Woo. Look at that. And before I plonk that into my mouth, I think we need to say goodbye. It's been a stone gym. And you know what time it is. Bye bye from Food bye. Journey. See you next time. Mmm.